directed to anyone in particular, but um, where do we go forward from here? What, what are you going to do to work toward recognition within the larger communion? And do you have a plan B if that doesn't happen? I think as Bishop Duncan indicated, we've already begun. Uh, we have a tremendous number of expressions of support from archbishops around the communion. Uh, we anticipate that will increase uh, as we uh, work with them. It's interesting, within the Anglican communion, recognition of new provinces comes from the primates, uh, which is a, a technical word that describes lead archbishops and does not refer to the zoo. Um, and so uh, we expect, and we've already got it, strong indications from uh, archbishops representing, as, uh, as Archbishop Duncan indicated, uh, the majority of Anglicans already sort of standing with us. But I think we see this being done relationally. We don't see it in the sense we're not going to send a letter to say sign up. Yeah, but rather what we intend to do is to tell our story with a number of observers here who will help us tell our story. And then in response to that, we anticipate that an increasing number of the, the provinces will, will uh, declare themselves to be in full communion with us. Um, I think it will take time. I mean, uh, relationships take time to build. Uh, what's happening in this country is complicated. Uh, it's hard to understand, and so therefore we anticipate taking that time uh, to share our story and then to look forward to that response. We don't actually need a plan B because plan A is already working. <laughs> Jeff. Hi, uh, Jeff Walton from the Institute on Religion and Democracy. Uh, my question has to do with uh, this morning, Metropolitan Jonah uh, called for a new dialogue, possibly leading to full communion uh, between the Anglican Church and the Orthodox Church. Um, how do you foresee the departure from the Episcopal Church um, impacting ecumenical relations uh, with other Christian churches going forward? It's often the Archbishop who's involved in these things, so I stand again before you. Uh, actually, what is happening, uh, and, and it, it, it's fascinating to see, particularly the Orthodox and Roman Catholic interest in what's happening here, uh, but the National Association of Evangelicals, um, the, the Association for Church Renewal, um, we actually had correspondence with Southern Baptists, um, and uh, uh, it's it's been it's been a remarkable season. The reason that so many are interested in what's happening here is that all of a sudden they see Anglicans who look like the Anglicans they always knew. You know, Anglicans were uh, were at, at at their best in in the history of the ecumenical movement. Um, uh, Anglicans were the bridge often between Protestant and Catholic, or between uh, Protestant and Orthodox, or even sometimes between Orthodox and Catholic. And suddenly, we're, there, there are Anglicans again who are trying to be, who really find themselves with, with, with the, the connection to the great tradition, with connection to the great mystical tradition, with connection to, to the word and the Protestant Reformation. What's happened with the Episcopal Church and Anglican Church in Canada, what's happened with Western Anglicanism is Western Anglicanism in the last 30 years or so has tried to be a bridge to the culture. And the great difference is when you're a bridge among the churches, you, no matter where you are on the bridge, whether you're in, on the bridge to evangelical or on the Catholic side or on the Pentecostal side, you're always somewhere within the, the Christian household. Once you attempt to be a bridge to the culture, you're on one side of, of the whole family, and you don't have to go very far over the bridge before you're not recognizably Christian anymore. And so suddenly there's this great interest in what we're doing because, of course, we look like what Anglicans are supposed to look like. We look like that mainstream. And um, uh, it's, uh, again, in terms of the, the, the extraordinary nature of the day, well, there is much to talk about between us and uh, the Orthodox churches uh, that after 35 years of a suspended dialogue, the Metropolitan of the Orthodox Church in America comes to announce to us that the Orthodox Church in America is prepared to re-establish the dialogue and has proposed dates for that to begin is extraordinary ecumenical. We'll leave now. We're just about at the end of our time, and uh, we'll go ahead and conclude our press conference. We'll try to keep our people up here for just a few minutes. Uh, if we
we have anyone that we can accommodate with a one-on-one -on -one or maybe a radio interview. And uh, then uh, Suzanne will take us back to the press room to do some work and eat a dinner before the service. So thank you very much for coming. I'm glad that you came and are part of this day with us. Thank you.